All right, we are official. Welcome everyone. My name is Rachel Sirota and I am so excited to welcome you to this event tonight. It is going to be amazing. We have been planning this for what, like over a month now. And we're so excited about it. We think that you guys are going to really enjoy it, whether you are here with us live or you are watching the recording. So I just want to quickly tell you a little bit about what's gonna happen tonight and introduce you to our amazing panelists. And then we're gonna dive right in. So this event is called Master Your Home with Power. And we are the oil power community. And we collaboratively love to work together to educate all of you and each other on the safe and effective use of essential oils and essential oil-based products. And the idea for this event actually came out of our doTERRA leadership retreat, which happened last month. And over the course of the past few weeks, we've been talking and thinking, and I think we have put together a really fun event for you. So we are going to start by showing you a quick video from that leadership event, the video that started it all, to kind of get us all on the same page. And I'll introduce that in just a second. But first, I want to quickly introduce all of our amazing panelists. So we have Patricia Dobler, who is joining us from Pennsylvania. We have Liz and Elena Swan joining us from New Hampshire. We have Jesse Brigham joining us from Michigan and Jen Rambala joining us from New York. And I'm in New York as well. They used to all live in New York, you guys, and then they left me. Me, personally, that's how I feel. Anyway, <laughs> you will get to hear more from all of them in just a little bit. But first we are going to watch this video by an amazing woman named Lauren Bush. And Lauren is trained as a registered nurse, but she is also a homeschooling mama and an essential oils expert and an amazing, amazing human being. And she is gonna share with us a little bit about her personal and professional journey to learn more about the toxins that may be lurking in our homes and what we can do to change that. So this video is just about 10 minutes. It's really quick. And I think that you guys are gonna love it. And after that, we will jump into our panel discussion. Okay, so let me get my screen share on. Okay. All right, hopefully you can see this. Trisha, give me a thumbs up that this is working because you're right at the top for me. It's now my pleasure to welcome to the stage a doTERRA diamond and registered nurse, Lauren Bush, to talk to us about incorporating some detoxification practices into our homes. Hello, everyone. My name is Lauren Bush. I am married to my high school sweetheart, John Bush, and I am the mom of nine amazing kids. In my pre doTERRA life, I was a medical ICU nurse. About 95% of my patients were trached and ventilated, so you could kind of say respiratory care is my thing. And so while I know part of the invitation as to why I'm here today is because of my medical background, I actually want to start off with sharing information that I have learned because of my most precious title which that is the mom, but don't worry. I will get right back and I will put my practitioner's hat back on. And then I'm gonna tie this all up and I'm gonna tell you how to take all of the amazing information that you learned today and apply it to your business. In fact, we're gonna set fire to your business. When my daughter Chloe was nine months old, she was diagnosed with a really scary respiratory issue. The thought process for me as a mom and a, and a medical ICU nurse is that we get a diagnosis, 
We've received some medication and we kind of go on with our way. The problem was that's not really how it went. The doctors couldn't figure out what was causing her attacks. They couldn't figure out why the medication wasn't working. They couldn't figure out what was going to happen if she stayed on the amount of medication that she was on for any prolonged period of time. And in fact, we actually got to a point where the doctor said, we don't know how to help. So I found this amazing quote that actually sums up our journey, which is, if you're unable to understand the cause of the problem, <laughs> thank you, it is impossible to solve it. You see, at the beginning of our journey, I actually had a friend ask, are you open to trying essential oils? And unfortunately, my ego totally got in the way. I thought, you have no idea how sick my child is, and you have no idea how smart I am. I am a nurse. If there was something that was going to help my child, me or my colleagues would have already heard of it. And my ego got in the way for three years. Three years of sleepless nights, three years of watching my daughter suffer until we got to the point of complete and utter desperation. And then I opened up and I said, yes, I'm willing to try essential oils. And while our very first essential oil experience was enough to make me an instant believer, it was the lifestyle changes that came along with doTERRA that made the greatest impact on my daughter's health. You see, I'm a little bit ashamed to admit that I had a very toxic routine in my house. So all of my crunchy mamas who are watching this right now, please try not hard not to cringe too bad and know that I have learned so much. You see, my daily routine looked a little bit like this. Every single day, I'd come downstairs and I'd light a couple candles because ambiance. Then I'd go and I would check all of the plugins in my house and I'd see if they needed new cartridges. I'd then grab my bottle of Febreze and I sprayed every single soft surface in my house. A couple times a week, I'd put down carpet powder because even the carpet needed to smell good to me. When it came to laundry, I actually chose my laundry detergent based on how strong my clothes would smell when it came out of the wash versus how clean my clothes came out of the wash. In fact, that's how I chose my laundry detergent and my fabric softener and the bounty bar that was in the dryer and the extra little smelly pellets that I poured into the washing machine. It was that bad, guys. But the piece that I thought I had figured out the greatest hack as a mom was when I went around and I changed my kids' sheets once a week, I would take a bottle of baby powder and I would sprinkle it all over the mattress and then I'd put the clean sheets on and then I'd pat the bed so a little powder came through because I love the way that my kids would smell when they waked up in the morning, woke up in the morning. I didn't know that what I was doing to make my house feel and smell like home was causing the problems that we were so desperately looking for solutions for. So let's really talk about the cause of disease. And there's two really big culprits that I wanna focus on. One is nutritional deficiency, it's a big one. Second is chemical exposure. Some might argue that genetics play a big part in this, but I want you to think of genetics like this. What was your grandmother exposed to while she was pregnant with your mama? What was your mama exposed to while she was pregnant with you? And then what are you being exposed to now? Because all of those influences, all those chemical exposures influence our genetics. In your lifetime now, the things that you're exposed to, which Nicole just kind of touched base on, trigger things called epigenetics. We can turn certain genes on and we can turn certain genes off. So here are two amazing articles and believe it or not, they were published one year apart. First one's from ABC News, and it says, oh, the average woman is exposed to about 168 chemicals on a daily basis. Huffington Post did the same article one year later. The average woman is now exposed to 515 synthetic chemicals. And what's more dramatic to me than the increase of chemical exposures, it's that last part of the title, without knowing. So what the heck is the problem? How do we not know what we're putting on our body? And this is the problem. As consumers, we think, oh, it's on the shelf. It's been tested. It has to be safe. No one would sell something that's not good for my health, right? That would be incorrect. In fact, if we looked at the cosmetic industry alone, which is something we place on our skin on the daily, right? There's over 10,000 chemicals that go into formulation. Now, there's some really amazing countries that have gotten together and they're looking at the chemicals and what they do, and they've banned about 1,400 of them. Unfortunately, the United States is not among them, 
the FDA has only banned 11. So now I want to put my practitioner's hat back on, and I want you to see what the health impacts are from these chemical exposures. So first, I have to address hormonal health. You know, I think this is that topic that we have the greatest awareness of, but definitely the least amount of respect for, because we write it off as a mood issue, which is why this e-card was so easy to find, right? I don't think you understand how these hormones work. You're going to make me do something that'll end up on the news. Guys, our hormones control so much more than that, right? It's our growth, it's our development, it's our metabolism. Did you know type 2 diabetes is a hormone imbalance? Sexual function, reproduction. Most of us have probably, probably also seen this picture of the cell right here in some of Dr. Hill's amazing presentations as he talked about the power of phytoestrogens. But I want you to focus on the little red dots, the xenoestrogens. And I want you to understand that xenoestrogens is really an umbrella term. It's all the chemicals that either mimic estrogen or have a major influence on our estrogen levels. We are wellness advocates. Are we really living up to that title if we only offer a solution to the problem, but we do not teach about how they are causing the problem that they need a solution to? This is affecting our unborn babies, causing birth defects. It's affecting our teens, causing a mental health epidemic. And yes, this is a men's health issue as well. Men, when you compare the data, a 50-year-old man today has the same testosterone level as a 70-year-old man in the 1950s. So you're not being spared. I know part of what I love is science and research. I could do it all day long. And I'm sure there's a big group of you that are like, yes, throw it at me. I could do a thousand slides. Sounds good, right? And then there's the other half of you going, please don't do more science and research. So I summed it up all in one slide and both groups are going to be happy. I want you to know that there are tens of thousands of research articles on exactly what the chemicals do to our body. Chemical exposure has been linked to rising rates in cancers, asthma, autism, anxiety, depression, infertility, birth defects, obesity, obesity, insulin resistance, and other health issues. Many of these chemicals have never, never been tested for safety. Plus, they accumulate in the body and they interact in potentially harmful ways. Our babies are being born with hundreds of chemicals already accumulated in the body, and they still face a lifetime of exposures. So how do we help? Well, first of all, you can't avoid them all. These chemicals are in our carpeting, our vinyl flooring, the coating on wires and cables, shower curtains, raincoats, plastic toys, your car steering wheel, the dashboard, the gear shift, your medical devices, and our food and water. Our bodies, like my son, are literally screaming for help. It has become vital that we eliminate as much as possible. Our home care and our personal care are completely under our control. Plus, doTERRA has us covered. We have amazing products that cover almost every aspect of our personal care and cleaning our homes. And if doTERRA doesn't have it, there are some amazing clean companies out there that might also have it or learn to DIY. Now, I know there are some wellness advocates right now that just rolled their eyes when they heard DIY. So I'd like to remind you. I have nine children, I homeschool, and I run a doTERRA business. I can do all my DIYs in about three ingredients or less, one of them being an essential oil, in an upcycled pickle jar. You have the time and you have the resources. Okay, we're going to stop it there. Was that amazing, you guys? Let me hear in the chat or see some thumbs up, right? So fascinating to hear that information. Did anybody hear anything that kind of blew their mind? Maybe I see some heads nodding. Awesome. So what we're going to do is I want to ask some of our incredible panelists to share their brilliance with you. So each one of them is going to end up speaking for about five minutes. And you guys, there's going to be so much goodness packed into those little snippets that you are going to definitely want to get your notebooks ready, your pens ready, your mind is going to be blown. As we go through, if you think of any questions, pop them into the chat. At the end, 
we'll go back through the chat and make sure that we answer any of your questions, okay? So that way we can make sure that our speakers don't get interrupted and we can get all your questions answered. So Trisha, we are going to start with you. Obviously none of us start out knowing everything when it comes to this topic. And we are all always learning how to be better. So what was your toxic living aha moment? And what were your first steps towards a less toxic home environment? So I have a feeling there's gonna be some people on here that just had their aha moment, right? Like you just got blown away and you were like, oh my gosh, I need to do something. So I'm gonna actually share my screen really quick. Do okay. Come on. Hold on. I'm coming. Okay. Can you see my screen? You're good. Okay. This was my aha moment. You see those cute little baby toes? My little two-year-old daughter at the time, I walked, uh, we had been using essential oils for a couple of years. And I was learning so much about the skin being our largest organ and how it absorbs the oils and then affects all the cells in our body in such a positive way. I was learning and growing. And so I even knew to put oils on the bottoms of her feet, right? So that the nerve endings are all there and really helped her whole body. And one day I got my favorite cleaner, my pine salt. I couldn't live without it. And I cleaned the floors and I watched her walk across the floor that I just washed with pine salt. And my jaw dropped to the floor, like, wait a minute. Those same little tootsies that I put my oils on were just absorbing all those chemicals. And then I started thinking, going down the rabbit hole, wait a minute, I clean my bathtub with Clorox and soft scrub. And uh, then they go take a bath. And then I looked at my beautiful little English bulldog and she, with her paws, walked across the same floor and then licked them. And I knew I needed to make a change. And that garbage bag right there is my garbage, my personal garbage bag that I literally went under my sink and threw everything out that night. Um, it actually just popped up my memory. So it was April, I think of 2016. Um, and I, I, you can see the Febreze, the Goo Gone, the CLR. Oh my God, that was like so toxic to breathe in. My Windex, everything gone. And I knew I needed to start. I, I didn't know where I was going to do, but I knew I was going to take a step forward. So of course I started with my On Guard Cleaner Concentrate because that was just such an easy way to start. But then now. Now I'm dubbed the DIY queen and I started DIYing basically everything we used. So I cut out all those cleaners that you see there with completely either the On Guard Concentrate Cleaner or my DIY. Now I'm not gonna just talk about DIY and not give you some of my secrets. Now I have a lot. So I'm always happy to chat with anyone that wants to learn more, but I'm gonna give you some of my favorites guys. So you can take a screenshot of this. The, these were my favorite personal products that I make. So I know there's some of them are small, but if you take a screenshot and like enlarge it, you should be able to see everything. And if you can't, of course, reach out to me and I will make sure. But a, a lot of these are in the Oil Power Network. If you're a, if you are a member, we have them there. If not, get in get in there and get started so you can get access to all these goodness. My favorite was the makeup remover pads. I have to admit those were the, one of the most toxic things. They would literally burn my face every time I would use it. And then I started that, but I started slow. It wasn't make all this stuff overnight. I made one thing here, one thing there, got rid of one more product. And I'm gonna, now I'm gonna switch the screen. So take your screenshot if you haven't. I'm gonna switch the screen to my favorite cleaning DIYs. And this is where the magic really has happened in our home. I love finding new things that we can cut out, laundry detergent, fabric softener. The fabric softener is the most toxic thing in your house. My favorite, oh, the, the bathroom scrub. Little by little, 
It's one product at a time. It was never overwhelming for me. And I just, I, I loved it. Oh, I got to get back to it. There we go. Stop share. Here I am again. And that's what I did. One little product at a time, not to overwhelm myself. And we just get excited every time we experiment with different oils, different scents that we like. And we have really cut out absolutely every toxin, the candles, the everything, all the cleaning products. And it's been an incredible journey. That's my aha moment. Thanks, Trisha. That was amazing. I think that hearing kind of from real people really makes a difference, right? None of us are perfect. There's probably things that all of us can do to be better. So Jen, this process can feel really, really overwhelming for some people. So mm. I know ditch and switch is your thing. That so is. How do you recommend simplifying a ditch and switch routine for someone new wanting to dive into this lifestyle? Okay. So for me, I think the biggest thing is switching your mindset on this, right? And so the question that I always asked myself when I first started this journey was, is there an oil for this? Right. When, when things come up in your house, in your lifestyle it, with ailments, right. Really asking yourself that question. And guess what? The answer is always yes. It really is. And it's up to you to find it. And that's what I love, right. About this community and what we have to offer is you have resources at your fingertips and to simplify, how do you simplify it? I'm like the queen of overanalyzing everything. <laughs> and so for those of you overanalyzers out there, the easiest way is to ask. That's why we have this community. It's to also search a topic, right? Inside of our amazing app, what we have, if you're a member, you get to literally write in sinus. And anybody who has said that word, it will pop up for you. And you start really exploring the topic of being able to be empowered. But the first question is, are you truly committed to your health and wanting natural options? Because if you are, the easiest thing is just going room by room and you'll start slowly as you go through. You know, and the other thing is in terms of simplifying is understanding that this lifestyle in doTERRA, it's not an additional expense. It becomes a lifestyle. And I've had other people, you know, sometimes say, oh, you know, I'm on a budget and I, I have to cut doTERRA out of my life. But when you really think about that, it's about what we value and understanding that this is a lifestyle switch. This isn't a, about extra products or having the luxury of doTERRA in our life. It's truly something where you're able to remove the toxic chemicals and switch to better options. So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you something that's going to make it even easier for you. Um, and hopefully this works. Can you guys see? You're good. So here's another opportunity for you to screenshot if you'd like to, but this is how you simplify. You look at the products that you have in your, in your house, the same like Trisha was talking about, right? Finding everything that you need and understanding that you can save money by shopping from yourself. So if you already have a doTERRA account, if you don't have one, I'm sure you'll get connected to the person who invited you to this. And what you will find is you will be able to completely ditch and switch up many of the things that are inside of your home, right? So when you look at this from shampoo, conditioner, right? Shower gel, vitamins, protein, um, muscle rub, detergents, hand sanitizers, all of these things, probiotics. A lot of people think that doTERRA is just oils. And, you know, you have to understand that it it's not just oils, it's oils paired with personal care products. And that's why it's so easy to truly ditch and switch and just make it super simple. So when you run out of something, start thinking about it from the perspective of, oh, what can I do to shop for myself, right? Because in your back office, when you log on to order things, you're technically ordering from yourself because you get all of these amazing perks and bonuses and free products. So really take advantage of that and simplify it that way by just diving in and looking at a list like this and go through and look at the things that you're using. And another way to do it is maybe not by products, but also by the different rooms in your home. So look at things in your bathroom, your kitchen, your living room, laundry room, right? Bedroom, all of those categories. And you can start sifting through things and seeing what are, what's the top priority for you and going from, going from there. 
So that is for me, at least how to simplify. And remember, this is a journey of empowerment and you have so many amazing people helping you. You're not alone. I love that, Jen. And I love that idea that you can do it a little bit at a time, right? You don't need to get everything all at once. You can go one room at a time or wait as you run out of things. And when you have to buy new, you can look at buying healthier as well. That was awesome. Just a reminder to everyone, if any questions are coming up for you, just write them into the chat and we will get to them at the end. So Jesse, I want to move on to you. So I know that sometimes for some people, it's hard to believe that these changes that we're talking about actually make a difference. Like, all right, all right, I hear you chemicals are bad, but like, really? How bad is it that I have fabric softener? How bad is it that I'm really using, you know, dryer sheets or how bad are those Glade plugins? Like, does it really make a difference if I have, you know, switch to these healthier options? So can you share some of the positive changes that you have actually seen in your life by switching to these natural solutions? Yeah, totally. Um, so this like makes me think of a story, you guys, um, and maybe you've heard of it before. Like when it's the story about this person that is cooking this, this ham for Easter or something for Easter. Right. And they say, Oh, why do you do this? And they're like, Oh, it's because my mom did that. Right. And then, okay. Hey mom, why do you cook the ham like that? And it's like, because that's the way my mom cooked the ham. And, um, it reminds me of that because that's how I was with my cleaning, right? Well, why do you use that? It's because my mom used that. Now, nothing against my mom. <laughs> I love my mom dearly, but that's just what I chose, right? I didn't know any different. And it wasn't until I had my daughter um, and she was four months old when we were introduced to essential oils that I really started making a change. And that was... Um, seven years ago, actually. And um, so little by little, kind of like what Trisha did, I started changing things up, but I wasn't really sure if this was working. Now I was having some health challenges a couple of years after this um, myself. And I went to my doctor and did this full workup. Um, and it was so crazy because after I did this whole workup, um, the doctor came back to me and said, you must live a really, really clean life. Like you must let, you must eat organic. You must not have any chemicals in your house. And I was like, yeah, wh why? Like, how do you know that? And she said, it's because it was in my blood work. Like she said, the arsenic in my blood was the lowest she had ever seen. Um, and for me right there, that was validation and confirmation that I needed um, that all of these changes I had been making over the last couple of years um, were really working. And I think that was just a true testament and showed me like, just keep going. And yeah, it might seem like it, you know, takes a little bit more to make the DIY or whatever, but in the long run, that is more beneficial to me and my family. Um, so I just need to keep on going. So pretty awesome. That's amazing, Jesse. That's such a powerful story. Um, and right there to have those answers in black and white and hear that from your doctor, um, that's really, really incredible. So thank you for sharing that with us. So I wanna move on and talk about some more specific things. We've been very generalized up until this point. And I know we're all different with unique needs and circumstances. So I wanna just call on Elena to share a specific example. And I know, Elena, that gum health has been a struggle for you for quite some time. Oh, yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about kind of your history and how you have taken the toxins out of your teeth? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Jesse, because that just reminded me who I blame for the receding gums, my mother. Okay. <laughs> She taught us how to brush our teeth and we brushed too hard. Guess who all has receding gums in my family too? All of my siblings and my father too, I bet, because she probably taught him how to brush his teeth too, <laughs> all right? So if you have receding gums or if you want to have better teeth health, I have a whole routine. I didn't make a fancy little picture. You I gotta just, give him a smile. Okay? I brought it off. Look, look at those. I know that right? you're probably seeing it on a small tile, but 
they're sensitive okay so when you have receding gums you also have sensitive teeth so you have to start with a little glass with warm water you don't want to do cold you'll be like ah you got to do warm you put a little salt in the glass okay a drop that's sea salt right there little sea salt a drop of your clove oil in the glass then you rinse that's to prepare your teeth for the brushing okay stay with me <laughs> then we do the water pick does everybody have a water pick if you have sensitive teeth and receding gums you need a water pick invest in it i also have to use the periodontal tip now you want to put that setting on the lowest setting because it hurts when you have those receding gums and you know when they put that thing in at the dentist and it says oh five six seven oh boy well better get her in for the for the descaling. Anybody have descaling ever? Please? Oh, Denise, you had descaling. I'm sorry for you. This is what you're gonna do from now on. You ready? Then you have to have an electric toothbrush. If you have a regular toothbrush, you are brushing too hard. This helps you to not brush that hard, okay? So you go over your mouth with the water pick, then the electric toothbrush. What do you use? Obviously our on guard toothpaste, duh. What else do I do really amazing for receding gums is the tea tree oil. You put a drop of it on your toothbrush with the on guard toothpaste, you brush. During the pandemic, I was like, oh no, I can't get to the dentist. They're gonna be really mad at me. I started putting Copaiba on my gums. So I take a little drop and I rub it on my teeth, on my gums all over. And that's been amazing. Then I follow up with the amazing on guard mouthwash, okay? I went to the dentist after the pandemic, so it was about a year that I hadn't seen the dentist, and I was done with the periodontal appointments. Boom, done. I was so excited. I mean, if you have receding gums, you know how excited I was. They said you can come back for a regular cleaning because when you have the periodontal, you also have to go every four months and guess what it doesn't cover in your insurance, okay? So any questions, I'm happy to answer anything about teeth health. I love my teeth so much. And it's really a labor of love over here, folks. I just wanna <laughs> let you know that these teeth are very well taken care of in the mornings and in the evenings. You know, you gotta do it. Elena, do you do that morning and night or just once a day, the whole routine? Once a day in the morning. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just want to clarify for everyone. Yes. That is amazing. I hope you guys like wrote all that down. If not, Elena has also written it all out for us in the oil power mm -hmm. network. So just uh, several people have mentioned that amazing resource already, but it's a huge perk of being a member of our community. And if you missed any of those steps, um, be mm -hmm. sure to check it out. All right. Yes. I want to kind of move outside our homes for our last panelist. Um, so Liz, we know that there is a lot in our environments that we can't control, right? Lauren talked about all of those things that we're exposed to, the pollution, the plastics, all sorts of chemicals every time we leave our homes. But there are some things that we can do to master our outdoor environment, right? And you are the queen of outdoors people at least amongst <laughs> all of us. So share right. with us some of your tips on how to master your outdoor environment. Sure. Yeah. And thank you. Like I've, I've, I've already learned so much um, I, from everybody. This has been fantastic. This is, it's great. Um, so one thing that I, I, guys, you know, I was a camp counselor for many years of my life. Like, and I'm talking like primitive camping. I'm outside in the woods. In this was like, no true Beverly Hills. No, this was not like luxurious camping in a no. cabin where you go and you do like an American girl program. This was like, <laughs> you go and you are in the woods. You have to requisition to the kitchen to get your food. You only send two people. They only give it to you once a week. You cook everything over an open fire. You have to canoe to get places. You have to walk two miles to get anywhere like in the main camp. Anyways. This is not when we met. For years and years of my life, I used bug spray like off and mm. cutter and things that had very, very high amounts of DEET 
it does not get worse than that, putting that directly on your skin, okay? That is so poisonous. It even says on the, on the containers, do not apply directly to skin. And here we are spraying down campers out in the, out in the wilderness because guess what? Their parents all send them to camp with those bug sprays. And I spent so many years applying these toxic bug sprays slathering myself, slathering my neck, my hair, my legs, my whole body. And I have, you know, some different autoimmune things that have cropped up in my, you know, adult life and my adult adult life. That was young adult. Now I'm in real adult, like in case you're wondering. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Mm -hmm. when we really got into getting all of these chemicals out of our lives as much as possible, One of the things that was very apparent to me was needing to get rid of this bug spray. And don't get me wrong, ticks and bugs are, they can be dangerous. They can carry diseases, especially ticks. And we are very careful about them, right? But we want to use things that work, but we need to make sure that they are safe. We need to make sure that they're not worse than the problems that are going to be caused by the ticks. Okay. Because those kinds of chemicals really cause a lot of problems. So One of the things that I make is my own homemade repellent blend that works this, this sucker, I call it the force. Okay. I'm going to share my screen so that you can take a little screenshot and you can enhance this too, with a couple of other oils. And I'll give you those little tips right now. And I'll put this in the, um, mighty networks later, but this is the force. And this is my, my personal recipe. And I do, you know, soup it up occasionally with a little extra, tea tree when you know it's black fly season so you know just if if you're dealing with black flies don't come to new hampshire and black fly put some tea tree in there this really works this works really well this is the size bottle that i have it in right now it's a four ounce spray bottle i spray this down um on both of my kids and i actually coach a baseball team now too and all the the parents are asking me for natural solutions for bug spray because I'm like, oh boy, I'm like, please do not spray the cutter or the off anywhere near these kids. Please don't do it, you know? Um, So it's really important that you reduce the amount of toxic exposure. We want to be able to enjoy the outdoors, but we want to be able to do it safely. Another area that I think is really easy to um, include some natural options where you might not think it's possible is a first aid kit. I always have a first aid kit handy. We do a lot of outdoor activities. We kayak, we hike, we bike, we roll around outside in the dirt for no reason. I don't even know. Um, I take people on moderate hikes. um, And sometimes on those moderate hikes, people get scrapes, you know? And, And what do you do when you get a scrape? And how do you use your oils for those kinds of things? Well, you can use a little lavender or tea tree to soothe those minor cuts and scrapes. Lavender is an amazing thing. Like if you're out and having a campfire, um, lavender is great if you get a little burn, you know, a little mild burn, put a little mm-hmm. lavender on, it's gonna soothe it right away. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Um, so when we are outdoors and if the kids are running around without shoes and maybe they hit a deck with, you know, maybe some not really wood of integrity, they get splinters, you know? And so what would I normally use? I would normally try to use like some kind of antiseptic, maybe peroxide, Um, but in a pinch, guess what else I have in my first aid kit? I have a little on guard and a little on guard sanitizing mist. This is a really good little thing to spray on those little areas that you need to remove splinters from. And this actually helps them to come out a lot easier, cleans up the area and it's gonna disinfect it, okay? So this is my little skin hack for that. But other than that, you know, you just wanna make sure that you're using things like, you get an upset tummy, have some Digest Zen in your first aid kit. No need to have the Peptabismal pink pellets. You don't need those, you just need the Digest Zen or a little peppermint. I love having peppermint beadlets in the first aid kit as well, because these are little self-contained quarter drops of oil. I can just take this out and pop it in my fingers and rub it on an upset tummy 
or use it for myself for some digestive relief or some energy or even cooling off so you in the keep hot, on hiking hot summer right? just keep on keeping on you keep know on hiking. and you know all of these things we can use these no matter where we are and the nice thing about them is that it's really easy to make yourself a super compact you could use you can use something as simple as like a little container like this throw a couple of oils in it throw it in your backpack throw it in your car um you know and have it when you're out and about so you can you know manage all those little solutions yeah. when you need to but the bug spray guys i call it the force for a reason you need it in your life it smells really great too. smells good everybody always wants it they're like liz what's your recipe i'm like i'll give you the recipe they want me to make it for them i say no you got to do it yourself. I'll teach you how to do it because you know what? I love teaching people how to make it themselves because then they don't have to rely on anybody else. And you know what? They can do what Jen said, buy it from themselves. Stop pouring tons of money into toxic right. products. Um, it's not cheap, right? It's not cheap to buy all of those things. So replace those things in your home, make it easy, focus on one thing at a time. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Love it, Liz. And for those of you who are wondering why several of us laughed when Liz <laughs> talked about hiking, it's because we were with Liz in New Hampshire where she promised us a nice moderate hike. Don't believe her. It was by a standard of a hiker that was an easy hike. I gave you, a, I threw you guys a bone with the moderate, okay? <laughs> you see Trisha? Do you all see Trisha? This just a little warning. If you're ever with Liz in New Hampshire and she's like, oh yeah, Easy, moderate morning hike. It's not so moderate. Anyway, that was fantastic. I love the bug spray recipe. I call mine vampire spray, but it's very similar to yours. Um, she did lie to us, Jonah, she did. Um, but that, that, those were some fantastic tips. I loved them. I love that tip about the peppermint beadlets and then popping them. If you just need to have a little bit of peppermint, it's sometimes easier to carry those around. So that was like great tip. I want to circle back because we've had some questions come up in the chat, mostly about Elena's teeth. So Elena, you can't walk away right now. You need to come back. Okay, so... Um, he wanted an apple, sorry, we got the kids. Elena, if you're only doing that whole routine in the morning, what are you doing at night? Just brushing? Um, the, the, with the electric toothbrush, brushing with the toothpaste and also the tea tree oil drop, okay? okay. I'll also add that I'm 42 years old and I've never had a cavity. That's impressive. That is impressive. That is and then um, Lee wants to know if the water pick is painful. It, it isn't on the lowest setting. And with the periodontic tip, it actually comes out even slower because it's a really fine tip. You got to get it in each of the grooves, each of the grooves. I will say, because I use it also, be careful with the water pick because I've accidentally sprayed my bathroom more times than I would like to admit. Yeah. So, you know, just, just be warned. Just you know, maybe don't be like dressed up, like perfectly ready to go out and figure the last thing you're going to do is brush your teeth. You might end up wet. I'm just, just saying. These um, are all very good tips. Thank you. <laughs> I suggest, you know, you take your shower, maybe you're still in your bathrobe. That's when you do your teeth. And um, Elena, why don't you do this at night? Like the big routine at night? Why do you do it in the morning? It's just something that I do in the morning. Okay. But you don't think it would like make a difference if at night there was like more time. I feel for really good about where I am in my journey. If you feel like, you know, you got to kick it up a notch, you, you should do it twice a day also, you know, I Thank felt you. like I was good. You're welcome. All right. And then, um, Adriana wants to know about the uh, DIY for hand sanitizer. Any, anyone want to jump in? Trisha, I see you nodding your head. You want to share? Yeah. Um, so Remember, we can't call it actually hand sanitizer um, because that's a trademark thing. Like doTERRA has a hand sanitizer. So we call it a cleaning mist, a hand cleaning mist. Um, so you can simply use a spray bottle that you can get from doTERRA in the back office, those great little handy dandy spray bottles. Um, I like using aloe vera juice so that it's a little uh, gentler on my skin. 
and uh, I just use On Guard and aloe vera juice. Now, if you want to get more technical, you can add a little witch hazel or alcohol or the 100 proof vodka if you want to have that CDC standard of like 64% alcohol. I don't. I just use the aloe vera juice and uh, the On Guard and that does it for me. I like to sometimes spice it up with some eucalyptus because eucalyptus has really great antiviral, antibacterial properties as well. And I like the smell of it. So easy peasy. Love it. Love it. And yes, um, somebody commented, you can reuse an old on guard mist bottle too, if you have an old bottle. Um, and Chrissy pointed out that the bug spray works great in the continuous mist spray bottle. I agree. That is what I put mine in. Cause then you like hold it down and like just just like continuously, <laughs> the kid just has to spin and they get covered. It's great. And another nod to the bug spray, because I use a similar one. I just add a couple different oils, but my daughter is religiously applying it every time she leaves the house all over her. She's so good. She's five. And she, we have never had a tick on either of our children. Never. And my nine-year-old doesn't like the smell of it and won't put it on. Well, guess who had a tick on him today? and I pulled it off of them. Well, he'll be using it now, but it's that effective that when people talk about like pulling ticks off their kids every night, I'm like, I don't, I don't even know what that's like. My, my kids are outside every day, but they've never had a tick. Mosquito bites are minimal because the, this bug spray works incredibly, except for when you don't put it on. All right, some, somebody missed the bug spray. So just so everybody knows, Everybody who registered for this event is going to get a copy of the recording. So that will go out tomorrow, probably. So you will be able to refer back to it. We also have a very similar bug spray recipe posted in the Oil Power Network. So for those of you who uh, already have a doTERRA account, you can get access to it there. And Liz just posted the image of her um, force in the chat as well. So that was like a lot of different ways that you could get a variation on that recipe. So several times tonight, we have mentioned our oil power community and that uh, incredible resource that we have for our members. And for those of you who may not have a doTERRA account yet, you might not quite understand what we're talking about. So as we wrap up, I just wanna explain how that works. doTERRA is similar to a Costco or a Sam's Club or a BJ's in that the smartest way to get your doTERRA is to have a wholesale account where you get access to all of the best products at the best prices. And with doTERRA, that basically means that you get a 25% discount below retail. So we always say, Friends don't let friends buy retail. So if you don't yet have your doTERRA account set up, we want to tell you about a special offer for you to get it set up. And don't worry for those of you who already do have a doTERRA account because this offer is actually for you as well. So let me share my screen so you can see. I'm very visual, so I assume other people are too. Can you guys see that? Yes, I see some heads nodding. Awesome. So here's how this works. doTERRA released this incredible kit this month, the Aroma Essentials Kit. It is already quickly becoming a favorite because it contains our amazing, beautiful La Luz diffuser, which you see right behind me, right there. I have it on the purple setting because it's pretty that way. And 10 of our favorite oils that if all you can do is get rid of the Glade plugins and the scented candles and the Febreze and the air fresheners and all of those things, if that can be the first step that you take, it is a huge step. And here are 10 amazing oils for diffusing and making your home smell incredible, get that homey feel without all of those toxins. Now you can use these oils for a bunch of other things too, for cleaning and all these DIYs. So this kit includes that wholesale doTERRA account. So for those of you who are new with the purchase of this kit, you also get access to all of the perks that the members get. 
plus anyone who purchases this kit this month is going to receive a DIY starter set from us with some spray bottles and different things that you can use to help you get started on your DIY journey, as well as some of our favorite recipes so you know exactly what to do with your new oils and your DIY starter kit. So just get back with the person who invited you to this event whether it was Trisha or Liz and Elena or Jesse or Jen um, or me. And we can help you out. If you already have a doTERRA account, you can order that kit right on your monthly order this month. If you don't yet have a doTERRA account, you can order that kit for the exact same price and get a free membership along with it. And either way, you can get all of those extra goodies, okay? So any final questions before we wrap this up? You can either put them in the chat or just unmute yourself. You can ask any of the panelists. I just wanna make sure everybody knows too, cause I see a lot of my, my little buddy members here. Like if you guys order the kit, it's not just for new people. You guys get the amazing DIY little starter kit too. If you order this kit this month, so yep. take it. Take my free stuff. Yeah, it is a gift for everybody. New, old, wherever you are in your journey, it is a gift for all. Just let us know that you ordered it. Yes, just okay. send us a screenshot or whatever so that, so that we know. Yes, that is the right spelling, Copaiba. You got it. Any questions before we wrap up? All right. I am looking forward to continuing to chat about all of these topics with all of you. Share your great successes. If you make an awesome cleaning product, we want to know about it. If you come up with a great DIY, tell us because we are all always learning from each other and we want to learn from you guys as well. So look out for this recording and feel free if as you were listening to this, you were like, oh my gosh, my next door neighbor should have been on here or my best friend needs to hear this. Please share the recording with them. This is not something that we want to keep to ourselves. We want everybody to have this information. So share it, share it with everyone. If you have a group of friends who want to learn about this, let us know. We'll do another one just for your friends. Reach back out to us. We are all so passionate about getting this information out to as many people as we possibly can. All right, have a fantastic evening and we will talk to you guys all soon. Have a great night.